Hi, it's vegan personal trainer and nutritionist Paul from Hench Herbivore, and this is how, why, and where I shop to make them vegan gains, brah. Fizzy water. We all need to drink water. It's important for our organs. It makes us energized. 3% dehydration leads to 10% strength loss, according to one study. Super important. I don't tend to drink plain water unless it's fizzy, then I'm tempted. Sometimes I'll add in a little bit of lemon or lime juice, something like that, make it more interesting. Sauce, you've got to have some hot sauce, haven't you? Hot sauce! Make your food taste um, amazing. You've got to have that stuff in there. Soya milks. These came from Aldi, 50 pence from Aldi supermarket. So most of this stuff came from Sainsbury's. We like it because we get a delivery and, um, you know, we don't, we don't have a car. We prefer to burn fat, not petrol. So we cycle everywhere. Um, so therefore we get a big shop from Sainsbury's once a week, but yeah, certain other places, I'll let you know as we go along where you can get a, more of a bargain. We like to cycle there and do that, save a bit of money. Why not? I like soya milk, very protein rich. Gemma likes some almond milk on occasion. Flavahan's organic oats. This is the only thing that we really worry about buying organic. If we had unlimited money, if there was more availability, I'd get everything organic. But according to the science really, it's not bad. Like you get so many good things from whole plant foods that offsets any potential negatives. It's unlikely that the herbicides, fungicides, etc., are gonna do you much in the way of harm. According to the data, levels are generally well below the, the toxic kind of levels. However, with oats, they are grown in like wetter countries uh, and they use glyphosate, I think other chemicals to kind of dry the oats out. And because the oats are wet, they soak up tons more. Um, and so they can have five to 10 times the amount of glyphosate. So it's one thing that we do just take a bit of a care on because it's easy enough. Mostly I'll have porridge or smoothie for breakfast. Sometimes you fancy a change, don't you? Um, it's hard to get a healthy granola, but this one is decent. Not much sugar, loads of healthy things. Um, expensive, that's about four pounds, isn't it, Jim? Yeah. Expensive, that'll, that'll do me for two days. But you know, mostly I just eat oats and things. Coffee, I prefer decaf. I don't get on well with caffeine, but I like the chlorogenic acid, which is a great antioxidant. And that promotes autophagy, where your body kind of turns in on itself and does like potential cancers and things. Ideally, you want green uh, coffee, four times the chlorogenic acid. I've got some green coffee beans. You can't get it freeze dried. It's just a faff. So I find I don't actually do it very much versus I'll have two lots of this with soya milk, like two teaspoons at a time. So. I guess I'm getting 4x the antioxidants in that way. What have you got here, mate? Oh, this is capers. Salads, Just some like. tasty capers. I think Dr. Greg has included those in his diet recently. I can't remember why. Uh -huh. Maybe spermidine or something like that, that compound which is the most associated with their longest lives. Comment below if I've got that <laughs> uh, wrong. Now we'll talk about canned goods. Canned goods not as good as like fresh or frozen. But some are good, like it just stapled just to have in the cupboard. Hearts of Palm, why do you include these, Gem? I know they're sort of tasty. Any particular reason? I just like them. You just like them? Yeah. She just likes them. So just get some. Why not? <laughs> legumes, we eat a ton of legumes. Butter beans are my favourite. Um, we've got chickpeas, black beans. Uh, lentils, red kidney. We'll just go back to here. I noticed we had some. Chopped tomatoes, they're useful. Again, we don't like to drink, eat too much from a can, but they're a useful staple to have on hand. And then these old, old, old Paso refried beans. If you're making something Mexican um, and you're in a rush, that's like a good brand. Beware, in some countries they have, I think, lard in. Uh, in the UK, they're vegan by default, and in other countries they'll have a vegetarian version, which is vegan, so watch out for that. Pre-made type meals, we don't have many. We like to have one or two in stock just in case we're in a rush. So this is really good. Printer's plant-based lentil and mushroom bolognese, pretty high in protein. Salsa, one of the best condiments, low fat, high in lycopene and other great nutrients. Canned pineapple, we don't tend to eat, again, much in a can, particularly like fruits, but this is useful for some recipes, isn't it? Like there. Yeah. What is the recipe? Sweet and that's sour stir fry. Sweet and sour stir fry. And there's a black bean and pineapple chili. stew. Chili? chili. Yeah. Stew. <laughs> it's got chili in it. It's a stew in one of our cookbooks. If you want recipes, check out our cookbooks link below. They're well good. Don't like to brag. 
dried fruit, I eat a lot of dried fruit because I need to eat a lot of calories, so it's an easier way for me to get nutrients in and calories. People say it's, uh, it's harmful. It's not harmful. It's only harmful if you don't need too many calories and you can overeat it. Fresh, of course, is better. It's going to have more nutrients. But the amount of calories I eat, like I can't just eat all fresh fruit. So it's useful. It's not a negative. I don't care what anyone says. Herb teas. We drink a lot of herb teas. This is the only one we needed this week. Now, most of these berry type ones, these fruit ones, they will use hibiscus uh, petals for the red color. And that's the most antioxidant rich tea in the world. So even though this doesn't take hibiscus tea, I don't even need to look, it will have hibiscus and that's really protective. Tahini, liquid gold, sesame seeds. I recently found out that sesame seeds, seeds have a high amount of the anti-cancer lignans, a bit like flax seeds, not as many, but still a good amount. Most other foods, rubbish for anti-cancer lignans. Um, so, you know, this is not oil. I, we use this in place of oil if we want dressings and things like that, because it's a ground whole food rather than being bereft of the fiber. I used to feel a little bit bad about using lots of it. I don't know why. And no, I really don't because I know it's really protective against like prostate cancer for a woman breast cancer. Very, very good. I should tell you that came from our local Asian supermarket, Spiceland. It's on Deerham Road in Norwich if you happen to live in Norwich. Uh, half the price. Half the price. That's why they call me Terry Tibbs. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, sriracha, you know, again, you want a bit of hot sauce, different sauces for your foods. Just helps. It's like the spoonful of medicine, the spoonful of sugar <laughs> that helps the medicine go down. A lot of these, again, we like to cook from scratch, but if you're in a rush, it's good to have one of these in your store cupboard. I don't think this has got any oil, or if it has, it's like virtually no oil, but it's all like good stuff. And, it, and also, when you process tomatoes, the red pigment, lycopene, the carotenoid antioxidant, is more bioavailable. So actually, in a way, it's better to eat this, in some ways, than having just like raw tomatoes or tomatoes that you cook yourself. Tomato puree, what will you use that for, Gem? Healthy pizzas. Yes, yeah, so, so many dishes just help. Like uh, a dal, maybe I'll yeah. some in. So that's good. Of course, you know what vegetables are. You know that they're super healthy. So we just double down on those. Try to get some uh, orange, yellow, red produce in your meals, like through, through the day, so you've got your carotenoids. Greens should be emphasized. So we like a gem lettuce or we like a romaine. Um, iceberg is so low in antioxidants, it's not even worth bothering with, but these are good. Of course, broccoli. Broccoli's also got sulforaphane because it's a cruciferous vegetable, so very anti-cancer. And of course, you've got some cucumbers there. Is that a courgette? Yeah. Or a zucchini for our American friends. Greens. It's just called greens. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure that's very good. That might be a cruciferous vegetable, might it? I don't know. It's hard to say. Yeah. But pak choy definitely is a cruciferous vegetable. That cooks down to nothing. It's really tender, isn't it, in a stir fry. Add in at the last minute in a stir fry, or we call a steam fry. We cook with water, not oil, because it's healthier, less calories. Very good. And again, anti cancer. It's got that lovely sulfur effect. Let's we'll talk about these couple of other greens. We've got asparagus spears. They're delicious, aren't they? Mm. Uh, roast them on a, like a George Foreman or something. It really improves their flavor. Greens, double down on your greens, smash them in. Coriander, just really protective, lovely foods. Let's go back over to here. Mushrooms, they're not even in the plant kingdom. They're fungi or fungi. You can pronounce it either way. Um, they have unique myconutrients, not even found in the plant kingdom. Ergothionine is one of the only intramyochondrial antioxidants. It's an antioxidant that gets inside the little batteries, the sort of motors of your cells. Uh, and if you subscribe to the antimyochondrial uh, theory of aging, could slow the aging process. If you subscribe to that, the jury's out nowadays about that apparently. Sweet potatoes, loads of magnesium, um, carotenoids really health promoting. You should eat more sweet potatoes than white potatoes. We don't, so do as we say, not as we do. We prefer white potatoes. I don't think they're unhealthy. Some people say they're not healthy, but they've got loads of good stuff in them. If you are worried about white potatoes, what you can do is cook them, put them in the fridge and then reheat them. Uh, and then that kind of lowers the GI and makes them even better still. Uh, chipping them and cooking them at high heat cooking temperatures creates acrylamides and they are a potential carcinogen. Half a study say no, half a study say yes. Well, we don't know. Let's be like a bit cagey about it. Let's, let's hedge your bets. So what you can do is add like rosemary on serving. Uh, this lowers the um, AGEs by 
about 96% or something ridiculous. You can soak the chips, chip the potatoes, soak them for like 20 minutes, is it, I think? And that lowers from, a, from by about 66% the amount of advanced glycation end products formed, sorry, acrylamides formed. Um, so do with that what you will. You probably don't want to eat them all the time. You know, you're probably better off with steamed, mashed, microwave. Um, but, you know, we like a chip, don't we? Yeah. Or fries for our American friends. Salad cress, delicious and really health promoting. Onions, really anti-cancer. Get the red ones, they're 76% more antioxidants than the white. Avocado, we only buy one avocado because we don't want um, Piers Morgan saying that we're killing bees or whatever. Bellend. <laughs> <laughs> Garlic, really anti-cancer. All the alien vegetables, really anti-cancer. So your leeks as well, shallots, chives, very, very good for anti-cancer. Again, we've got some peppers there, you know, that's your carotenoids, red, orange, yellow peppers. Even greens have carotenoids in, but you can't oversee them because the chlorophyll is so vibrant. You know when leaves uh, go from green to sort of uh, reds and orange and yellows in the autumn, it's because the chlorophyll's died out and you're seeing the other colors that are already there. So, so health promoting these foods, smash them all in, feel freaking amazing. Fruits. Berries are, are the real stars. Grapes are particularly good. The darker, again, the darker the pigments, the more antioxidants you're going to get. These sort of things, really good for anthocyanins, like the blue, pink, red sort of colours. Most antioxidants for your money, red cabbage. So that's a good state. Well, again, cruciferous, so sulforaphane, anti-cancer. Bananas, we have a few bananas, have a few apples. You know, they're not the most nutritious, but they're good. Got some more courgettes there. We don't get such a variety of fresh fruits in the winter because it doesn't tend to be such good quality. So there's that. It's a shame we don't live in Costa Rica or somewhere. What else we got? Celery. That's really good for minerals, isn't it? Like a lot of your salad greens. Really good. Got some lemons and limes there. Just judge your, your recipes up. Add some more vitamin C and stuff. Melons are always good. Red lentils. Uh, most antioxidant rich legume, easy to digest if you're new to veganism or you don't want to eat tons and tons and tons of fiber if you're bodybuilding, obviously very protein rich. Again, something like this, it's mostly whole food, it's probably got a little oil, not the horrible killer oils, but still a bit of oil and salt. So I don't need it all the time, but a nice pantry staple if you're in a rush. Vermicelli noodles, these are made from brown rice and they cook in three minutes. You just put hot water on them. So again, good if you're in a rush. Grains wise, preferably eat whole grains by and large. We've got the packet brown rice there, which you can microwave again if you're in a rush, but better to cook your own. We've got, um, so this rice is white. So in recent months, I've always only ever eaten whole grains in recent years. In recent months, I've gone on to some white rice because I need to eat so many calories. Again, it's useful for me to not have my like fiber, like 160 grams a day plus. The more fiber you can eat, the better, the more protective, but you can only like eat what your gut can handle. And there does become a point where it becomes too much. According to the science, it seems that white rice isn't harmful like we used to think. What we've really realized with new science, with new, more nuance, is white rice is often a proxy for countries with just poor socioeconomic status and poor diet overall. So therefore their health wasn't so good. But when you tease those sort of things out, as things, it seems that white rice isn't harmful per se, just not as protective as a whole grain. So do with that what you will. I think I eat enough whole grains that I don't really need to worry about that too much. Again, dried fruits, these urban fruits are delicious. It's good to eat a range of different things for your gut microbiome and your overall health, but these are pricey, so we don't get a whole lot. Same with the Naked Bars, same sort of deal, they are delicious. You can get some really good cheap ones, can't you, Jeremy, in like yeah. Lidl? I've not seen and probably them in Aldi. recent times. They used have you to not? have them. Yeah. We don't normally go to Lidl, we normally go to Aldi. Mm. Are you? Confused anyway, too, probably. Do, do with that what you will. <laughs> Frozen berries, really helpful staple. They can be relatively cheap. They're so nutritionally dense, so many antioxidants. I really mix them up. I like dark cherries the best. I'm also a big fan of strawberries and I wasn't eating a lot of frozen strawberries because I'm thinking, well, your blueberries, your blackberries particularly, most antioxidant rich locally available berry, you know, they're more nutritious. But in Dr. Gregor's recent book, How Not to Age, he found out that um, strawberries are the only decent source of fisetin 
which is an amazing uh, compound that kills these so-called zombie cells, these senescent cells, cells that um, our body needs to get rid of, but they're hanging around, they're kind of died off, but they're pumping out pro-inflammatory compounds. So I'm happy to eat more uh, strawberries now and I feel okay about it. This sort of thing can save you a lot of time sliced uh, vegetables, pre-sliced. They're not as good in terms of you don't get the so much anti-inflammatory benefit because you do produce endotoxins so it's not bad better to eat fresh but in another way it depends how fresh your fresh is and sometimes the frozen stuff is fresh frozen and the fresh stuff might have been hanging around for days on the shelf so swings and roundabouts do with that what you will and then for our spices again we tend to shop at asian supermarkets you can buy in bulk so much cheaper and um you know these really are if there is such a thing as a superfood you know which is a marketing term designed to pot you from your hard-earned cash there's no scientific definition but if there was herbs and spices would likely be it because they're just virtually calorie free very very low in calories but very, very nutritionally dense. So we love us some herbs and spices. A lot of people have asked me what's up with Vivo Life. I used to be a Vivo Life ambassador, you know, for the sports supplements. I no longer work with those. Um, there's nothing wrong with the products. It was just like a personal decision. They are more, a bit more expensive. They're at the kind of upper end of the market, but they are very, very good, great quality, low in contaminants. And of course, you know, the more you pay for things, often the better quality and the less you pay. You know, with some of the bargain basement protein powders, you do get appreciable levels of things like heavy metals and you wouldn't want to eat or drink so many of those through the day. You know, at the minute with the state of the economy, we're trying to save a bit of money. So we've gone to my protein uh, for our products. I'm not sponsored by those, so don't get your hopes up. <laughs> I use uh, pro protein blend, vegan one strawberry I like, all the flavors are like decent. Use those as straight shakes in smoothies, in porridge for a breakfast. This helps you to get more protein in. Of course, the vast majority of our calories should be whole plant foods. And if you're not an athlete, you don't need these supplements. You know, don't think just because you're vegan, you need to add a protein supplement all of a sudden. If you're eating enough calories, from whole plant foods, the protein looks after itself, you probably get one and a half X your needs if you're an average person. If you're an athlete with strength and physique aspirations, yeah, maybe you need a couple of servings of a more processed food. So protein powders are good. I've actually gone on more to protein squashes. This is the My Protein, or My Vegan, uh, Clear Vegan Protein. This is a pineapple and grapefruit, like a lilt, that's a nice one. The strawberry one's really good. The apple and elderflower one's really good. And I find it's really refreshing. It goes down so easy and it's really enjoyable. But I'm actually drinking more of those than I am proper protein powders these days. And then again, more processed protein foods. This isn't bacon, I'll eat that really. It's so full of salt. It's ridiculously high in salt, which is not good, but it's really nice. It's really high in protein. Again, for an athlete, it's a useful thing. So I'll have this very rarely, but I'll really enjoy it when I do. Tofu, of course, is really good. Uh, that's one of the healthier refined uh, protein vegan products. And now they're coming pre-flavored, which is useful for people if you're in a rush. So that's a sriracha one, so that's handy. Uh, the plain one, normally we get this from LD. No, Lidl is the cheapest one. Yeah. And how much is it? It's a 500 gram block, isn't it? So it's bigger than your average like block. 199. 199, so it's like a fraction of the price. Having said that, this uh, Sainsbury's one is organic. The Lidl one's organic as well, but it's pretty cheap. Uh, so shop around for your tofu is one thing that I will tell you. Meat alternatives, I don't eat a lot. Um, I'll be honest, I mean, this is a chicken version. I like that sort of thing on an occasion if I'm trying to eat something just a bit different from just whole palm foods. But that one actually reminds me of chicken so much that on any given day, I might find it a bit distasteful. So all you carnivore diets saying, like, oh, he's trying to replace me, he want me. Well, no, I don't, I don't. I just like to have a bit of a change from just whole plant foods, but after the time, I don't end up enjoying it. Like these sausages, these are really tasty, rosemary and red onion. The reason I like these vegan sausages is because they don't have gristle and bones and crap like in them that make me want to throw up, even when I wasn't vegan. 
Like I didn't enjoy it. I didn't enjoy like thinking, what the hell is this mystery meat and floor scrapings in this uh, thing that's shaped like a cucumber to make it more palatable. So uh, get that up, yeah. Cheeses. You can get really good vegan cheeses in speciality places, you know, like yeah, uh, vegan speciality shops, health food stores, and they're made with like cashews, almonds, that sort of thing. Mostly cheeses are made with coconut oil, which is really horrible for your heart health. It will give you bad heart health, like eating animal junk will. But this one is called Nush, Nush, Nush. I don't know, a slash, <laughs> either way. This is creamy almond cheese spread, basically, with, it's got live cultures in it, it's got chive. It's really delicious. Um, expensive, pretty darn expensive, is that fair to say? Yeah. And again, probably quite salty, so you don't want a whole lot of it, but there's this. If I'm gonna have a hard cheese, you won't get that um, in a supermarket. You have to go to a vegan store or a health food store. Some brands are good, Nutcrafter Creamery, um, Mouse's favorite, Tyne cheese. Beware, some do have coconut oil, but most of those brands, most of their products are healthier. And you know, just a little bit of cheese in, crumbled into your salad can just lift it. Um, it's made with nuts, so that you know, you're getting the healthy fats. Tempeh, of course, one of your healthier meat alternatives. That is soya beans with mycelium, which is the roots of mushrooms to kind of hold it together. It's fermented, super healthy. Again, it's, it is processed, but really, it's two healthy whole foods sort of glued together and it's fermented, so it's really good to digest, like, you know, probiotics, that sort of thing. This is helpful stuff, silken tofu. So you can use that to make sauces, mousses, desserts. Super protein rich, get it in your smoothies. Tons and tons of protein, really health promoting. Tofu is something to double down on if you're a vegan athlete. Oh, and these falafels, these are mostly just whole foods. It's not a lot of additives, not a lot of oil. Uh, again, they're just good if you need to get something ready in a pinch. Now I know that People are going to ask, how long does this lot last? I've got no clue. It probably varies on the you products. Ask, don't you? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, how long would this last? Do you reckon? Right. Well, the fruit and veg. I mean, like probably a week. There's like a week's worth of milks here. Um, I'd say the the processed like protein foods. We we never have this many in a week, so they'll last like a, a few weeks. The tofu, we probably get through that many in, in a week, you know, between Easy, us. Easy, yeah. Yeah, this will last much more than a week. Um, maybe I'd say the frozen fruits would be a week or two. Probably get through these in a, in a week as well. Um, and then obviously if these last many weeks. You get, yeah. Don't get through a lot of those. So yeah, sort of berries, really. Yeah. Um, the stuff from Sainsbury's was 175 pounds. Not sure how much these were. And it was like another 15 pounds at sort of Spiceland. So yeah, that much money for some of it is a week and some of it is much more than a week. Work it out yourselves, you lazy gits. <laughs> If you would like bespoke personalized help with your health, body shape, or sports performance, then go to henshowbevore.com where you can check out our online coaching. We do meal plans, consultations. We've got cookbooks, nutrition courses. We've even got a free vegan nutrition e-guide. So you can have that for nothing. Link below. Check that out. See you in the next video.